Welcome to the TomTattle.com Driving Traffic Series. In this second module, we will discuss key words. What's a key word? My best explanation of what a key word is, a key word can either be a single word or most commonly a string of words or a phrase, for example, uh, that the search bots will travel through your website and determine exactly what your content is all about. What's a search bot? A search bot is a tool used by the search engines, for example, the Google bot, the Bing bot, the Yahoo slurp. Those are all bots sent out by those companies to determine exactly what content and, and, and to collect and gather data from our websites to determine exactly where they should be placed in the search engines. So the search engines compile all of this data and they take these keywords and, and they'll determine exactly what keywords your website might rank for. Now, believe me, it's a lot more complicated than how they determine which websites will rank where based solely on keywords. There's many more factors that go into it. In fact, there's over 200 known factors uh, involved in the algorithm at Google anyways to determine exactly where your website will rank in search. Okay, right, back to keywords. So we know already that a keyword can either be a single word or a phrase. And we know that search bots use those keywords to help determine exactly what your website is about. The third thing about keywords is some keywords can be much more competitive than others to rank for. So what determines if a a word is competitive, obviously supply and demand. How, how many people are trying to rank their websites or, or competing for that popular keyword or phrase? So for an example, if we were to take the term lawyer, let's say we're in the city of Orlando, Florida, and we have a law firm and we want to rank our law firm for the term lawyer. Probably very competitive. It's actually one of the toughest niches to, to rank for. It's a highly uh, competitive, very expensive niche to rank for if you're a lawyer. Sorry, lawyers. Um, you guys do make lots of money though. Uh, so lawyer is a broad term that we want to rank for as opposed to family law, which is more of a niche down subject where probably not as much competition if you were just ranking for lawyer. So if we want to narrow it down a little more, we could go family law or business law. So those are key words. And then as we niche them down, you would have less competition. So less competition means easier to rank for, right? So that's something to take into consideration. Now, I do not want you to think, okay, well, we're just going to avoid all the general terms because we'll never have a chance of ranking for them. For the most part, that's true. There's established large websites with lots of links pointing to them that have been around for years. And uh, it's tough to outrank those kind of websites with popular keywords, but that's not necessarily true. I mean, if they are ranking for popular keywords, that pie, we'll call it a pie, is a very large pie that has a ton of searches per month for that keyword. And a chance of you getting a sliver of that pie is still quite good as opposed to going for the small little pie of say family law versus lawyer, uh, you could rank higher, uh, say on page one for family law, as opposed to page three for the term lawyer, if you're a lawyer in Orlando and just coming out with a new website. Okay, so what if I told you there was actually a way that we could determine uh, or measure how often a certain keyword or phrase was searched for monthly? So in our example, we use the term lawyer in the city of Orlando, or also family law. So if we compare those two, and I plug it into my free Google uh, Keyword Planner tool, I, it tells me that the term lawyer is searched for 590 times a month in the city of Orlando versus 140 times a month for the term family law. So approximately you know, four times more uh, popular the, the broad term lawyer is. So, but still, Family law at 140 searches per month is still a valuable term that we could try and rank for. 
So how do you get that access to that free tool? I'll show you right now. I'll walk you through how you can sign up for the free Google search tool and uh, just follow along. Okay, so being we've signed up for a, a Gmail account or also if you already have one in, in uh, the previous module in step one, we uh, can step or sorry, we can skip that step and just simply when you're logged into your Gmail account, open up another tab and simply make a do a search for Google AdWords. Okay, so up top here, we have uh, Google AdWords, pay-per-click online advertising. Now, we want to simply sign up um, and create a Google AdWords account. Doesn't mean you're going to do any advertising. And they have this free tool, the Keyword Planner tool within the uh, Google AdWords. So I'll simply click on Start Now. Okay, once you land on this page, it's very important to uh, get this point here. We're simply going to click on skip the guided setup, and that will allow us to get to the keyword planner tool much easier than uh, if we if we have to go through the whole setup process. Uh, basically, it's asking for your website and your email address, and, and we'll get to that later on in Module 3 if you are interested in uh, setting up Google AdWords completely. So for right now, we're just simply going to click on skip the guided setup. And now it's simply going to ask you for uh, your email address, select which country you're from. And I'm just simply going to select Canada. Most of you will probably be in the US. Select your time zone, and then your currency. Now, your time zone and currency cannot be changed once you set those up, so make sure you set them up correctly. Just quickly enter my email address here. This is a uh, demonstration account, so actually this email address will be gone after I create this video. So do not try and get hold of me there. And then we simply click on save and continue. Now here it will ask us to enter our Google account. So we'll click on next. They've already preloaded the email. Then it'll ask you for the password. Once you've entered your password, click on sign in. And then it asks about a adding some recovery stuff. We're not going to worry about that right now. Click on done. You can add a backup phone number if you want or a recovery email. Again, this is just a temporary account for demonstration purposes, so I haven't set those up. And then you will land at this page. And you'll notice a whole bunch of options you can click on. We will uh, look at more of those in more depth in Module 3. But for right now, all we're interested in is at the top here where it says Tools. Simply click on Tools, and then the drop down appears. And what you're looking for is the Keyword Planner. So click on Keyword Planner. And here it says, find new keywords and get search volume data. So we want to search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category, or get search volume data and trends. And here's another option that we can get new keywords. So we're just going to simply select this, this middle one here, get search volume data and trends. So click on that. And the first thing it says is enter keywords. So I'll just simply type in lawyer and the next thing we want to do under targeting right now it has all locations so this is would give us the results for the entire world we want to narrow that down so I'll just simply click on that little pencil or pen there and where 
It says enter a location to target. I mean, you could enter United States, you could enter Canada if you're, you know, a global audience or most likely you are a local business and want to enter your city or or maybe even state or depending on the size of the uh, service area you service. So right now I'm just going to put in Orlando. So right up here, Orlando, Florida, United States. And I will click on save. And so right now I've got one keyword in here, lawyer. We're searching in the city of Orlando, USA. And I want to get the search volume, so click on get search volume. And right now, average monthly search for all ideas, it shows up 100 to 1,000. So it gives you a range. Now, that number I got earlier, uh, my Google AdWords account that I have is a an AdWords account that's had thousands, almost you know, tens of thousands of dollars through it. Lots of advertising. It's it's many years old, and beings, I am a long time customer of Google. I get a little more accurate picture of data. So here, you can see there's a big range. There might be 100 to 1,000 monthly searches. So for new years users of Google AdWords, until you build up a I don't know, uh, uh, a history with with Google, you do not have access to dead accurate numbers like I do. So anyways, this is the tool that gives you an idea at least what that search volume is. So let's say we wanted to, be, being this is not that accurate, maybe we could change Orlando. Let's go and change this to United States. Oops. So we'll add the country of United States and I'll just simply remove Orlando. So click on remove here and then click on save. So now we have 100,000 to 1 million. The reason I did that, so each uh, month, average monthly searches for the term lawyer in the United States is anywhere from 100,000 to 1 million. So it gives us a, a little more of an idea in the whole country what uh, kind of search volume that is. Let's add another term here. So I'm going to simply put a comma, space, and my next term will be family law. And over here I'll click on get search volume. So we know if we're comparing the two, okay, obviously family law gets lower search volume than the lawyer. So anyways, it can give us an idea of the search volumes. If, if you just start typing in related keywords to get an idea how popular those words are and if you should be including them on your website uh, and, and which ones are the, are the most popular. Also, you'll notice over the to the side here, it's got suggested bid. If you're actually running ads, now lawyer happens to be one of the most expensive uh, pay-per-click advertising uh, categories, I guess you, we, you would call it, at you know eight and a half dollars, seventeen dollars twenty-seven cents for somebody in your city clicking on family law. If you're a lawyer trying to gain clients, um, anyways, just gives you an idea of of this of the AdWords tool and how we can use it to determine search volume of certain keywords related to your website. Okay, I need to show you another feature of the G Google Keyword Planner. So uh, to get to this page, again, just simply you would click on Tools up top here and go down to Keyword Planner, and that would bring you uh, once again right to this page here where we, where we have the three options. So uh, the first time we went through the middle option, this time we will select on the top option here, search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. So click on that. This pops down. Um, this time, you know, for your small business, you can type in whatever. Let's say your lawn care business, type in lawn care. Your painting business, type in painting services or painting. Um, 
being as we worked with lawyer before, I'm just going to punch in family law here. And then uh, if you wanted, you could, you know, if you had a uh, product category, if you wanted to niche this down, you could enter a, a few things here or a uh, competitor's website even if you wanted to or your website and uh, it will crawl your website or your competitor's website and give you some keyword ideas. But anyways, we'll stick with this. We we have a uh, keyword of or key phrase of family law. Uh, again, we have Orlando here uh, selected. And at the bottom, we will we'll click on get ideas. Now, what it's going to do is spit out a whole bunch of uh, terms related to family law that you could perhaps target. And you'll notice in my account, I have a much more accurate uh, data here, uh, collection of how many searches per month. And you'll notice in the second column here, competition, you know, how competitive is it to rank uh, for that or to advertise, more specifically, to advertise for those terms. So you'll see here, uh, you know, being so we're in family law, you'll see divorce in the city of Orlando, uh, roughly 390 times a month that term is search divorce lawyers would be an excellent uh, phrase to rank for if you were a lawyer in the city of Orlando 170 searches per month obviously it's high competition somebody typing in divorce lawyers is looking for a divorce lawyer obviously and chances are if they uh, hire your services as a lawyer it's uh, you know thousands and thousands of dollars you could end up billing your client and that's why over here you can see, and again, these are in Canadian dollars, not US dollars, uh, $20.71 for that click. That's crazy. A lot of businesses that I advertise for, again, you know, landscaping or, or whatnot, one, $2 for a click. Uh, this is just a general guide. I mean, it doesn't mean every click that you get if, if you're a divorce lawyer in Orlando, advertising for that term doesn't mean you're going to pay $21. It might only be four dollars or five dollars this is just a, a guide I, it's not anything uh you know exact science to go by so anyways just uh going down here we can click up top here and just like excel we can arrange all the uh terms in uh ascending or descending order so child support's a huge one here right search for 5,400 times, but the term child support, if you're looking, you're a lawyer and you're trying to gain clients, is that really uh, a term that you think will land you paying clients? That's why it's only, you know, $4.24 a click here. That's why it's low competition. It's probably not going to generate people. It's not at the end of that sales funnel where people have their credit card out and they're looking for that term and trying to hire your services. Lawyer, 590 times a month. Attorney, 480. So it just gives you an idea, you know, what people are typing in in your business. So let's uh, change this to painting. Your painting business. Ah, so now <laughs> I wasn't too uh, accurate here, I guess abstract art acrylic paint uh, paintings spray paint probably not the the best one how, how about um, how about lawn care and we type in lawn care you can see landscaping lawn service landscaping ideas um, if you look at these high ones, those are the ones, no, that's not a good example. Lawnmower is not something, if you're a landscaping company, you're not wanting to put in the term lawnmower on your website. People are not looking for landscaping services when they're typing in lawnmower. They would be looking for lawn service. I mean, that they're looking for your, for your services. Again, here you can see that's a $7.22 click. Um, lawn care services. Wow, almost $12 it's showing. Again, it's not searched a whole lot, 70 times a month. These are just general guidelines, by the way. They're not exact dead on. So 
lawn maintenance, seven dollars. So yeah, lawn lawn care can be an expensive category as well. Just showing you, basically, in in the city of Orlando, how competitive it is. Now that can change from city to city, depending again on supply and demand. How many people are competing for those keywords? So that's the Google uh, keyword planner tool. And again, that is just looking for giving you keyword ideas to use on your website. So what exactly do you do with those keywords? Once you have a list of popular keywords, that's great. Uh, you're, you're a lawn care service here or, or a landscaper and you say, yeah, okay, lawn service looks like a, you know, a really good one that I need on my website. People are in the, you know, looking for those services, lawn care services. Um, just start writing all those key ones down that you think uh, people would be typing in. Lawn maintenance is another good one. Yeah, I know it's only searched 50 times, but those are the people at the end of the sales funnel looking for your services. Write all those down. And what do you do with them? Well, let's have a look. Let's type in Orlando Family Law. Oops. And I really can't spell here, can I? So Orlando Family Law, and let's see what comes up. So you'll notice in this in the results, look at this. One, two, three, four ads at the top. This map thingy, which will go in more detail in module four if you want to figure out how to get your business on the map here. You'll you'll see different attorneys in, you know, on these little red dots here that are listed. The large dots are these ones that are the top three here. Uh, I'll show you. We'll discuss that as well, how to get your business on the map. So we go down. Okay, now we're into the actual organic, as they call them. Organic is, you know, unpaid for. We're not paying for ads. These are the firms that are ranking at the top for the term family law. So let's figure out why are they ranking for the term family law. So I'll click on the number one result. Let's have a look at their website. Okay, so this one, um, he has the word family in the title up here. Again, family here, it's quite prevalent. Right at the very top, one of the first uh, things you can click on is family law. He's ranking for the term, uh, he I should say, he or she or this firm is ranking for the term family law. I mean, kudos to the web designer, uh, whoever designed this website. They ranked first in a large city for a very competitive term. And, and these are, you know, again, right here, the term family law. So those search bots that I was talking about earlier, they go through, they crawl the site, they they see the term family law. Okay, this this page must be about family law. Now I want to give you one caveat here, one warning. Do not go and stuff your web page with the term family law if you're a lawyer saying, oh, okay, Tom says I need to, you know, put this keyword in here a bunch of times and then I'll rank for it. That's no, no, please do not do that. Make it as natural as possible. Write your content with natural flow and include that keyword, you know, uh, two or three times, maybe in a clickable link. If that's a, an important term that you're actually trying to rank for. And that's it. Do not overdo it. If you overdo it, you're going to get yourself a penalty. The Again, the search engines are brilliantly smart. They're, they're, they will pick that up. They will say, okay, this particular page has you know 300 words and the keyword has been used seven times. That's you know obviously way too much. They're trying to game the system and we will assess a penalty to this web page. Just letting you know, um, you know, there are rules against it, so don't get yourself a penalty. Just make it look naturally. You know, I, I would be, you know, with this many words, three, four at the most times I would use family law, but uh, I think they've gotten away with maybe five times here. So let's go back. Again, this is, you know, what do you do with these keywords? Uh, look at this. They ranked number one and two in a large city. Kudos to them. Excellent. Um, let's have a look at this one. So again, the term is family law. Their website's taking a little long to load. 
but they've ranked fairly well in a large city. Here we go. Family Law, right at the top. So good for you, Donna. Okay, again, Family Law at the top here in a drop down menu. Um, family and, right? Family Law up here. And Family Law. And again, another, that's just their menu, Family Law at the bottom. Just showing you what keywords do and why. Uh, certain websites get ranked for certain terms, certain keywords, because they actually use it in their content wisely. They don't overuse it. They and it and again, like I say, there's 200 different variables that go into deciding why a web sh website should rank highly. And this particular website is uh, not only using the keywords, but it, it's an attractive website. It's it's it probably has uh, great metrics from Google. They're they're picking up that people are spending you know a fair amount of time on the website. They're clicking through, and uh, those send signals back to Google that that website is valuable for people looking for the term family law. So they rank it high. Um, every every new website I find, if you come up with a new website, it's going to be uh, you know given a chance. Google says, okay, yeah, you're new. If if you submit it, you have to submit it first of all, okay? And I'll I'll show you how to submit it later. Um, that's that comes in uh, in later how how you can uh, in module three how you can submit your website in order for Google to actually you know crawl it, say hey Google I'm over here come check my website out. It'll give your website a shot, and you'll notice early on, all of a sudden, maybe not necessarily the first week, the second week, or even the first month your website will appear, but then all of a sudden it will be there up near the top for certain keywords. And it will grade your website, basically. It's giving you a shot, saying, okay, you're new, let's see how you make out. And people will have an opportunity. There'll be a few people just you know, showing in the search results Oh, there's there's your website. They'll click on it, and and it's basically a, a rating. You know, how long did they spend on that website? Did they like bounce right back? Did they say, oh, this isn't a very good website, or it's taking too long to load? Forget it. I'm I'm hitting the back button button and checking out the next search results. If they're spending lots of time on your website, that's good for you. Uh, Google will give you some more time to uh, evaluate your site and see if it deserves to be on the first page or you know, in the top, near the top of the rankings. That's just my experience, my gut feeling. That's, uh, that's from my experience, what actually happens. Okay. So we, uh, we know about keywords. We know how to find keywords. I've given you an idea how you should use them in your site. Now, let's say you have, you know, four different main services. Let's say you're a, a landscaping company and you want to rank for the term lawn care, you want to rank for the term snow removal, you want to rank for the term landscaping. Uh, those are all different keywords. So can, should you have one uh, page with all those different keywords on it? And then it gets kind of confusing. I find if you uh, focus, you know, to like snow removal, for example, would have its own page. And you would talk about your snow removal services and your value to the customer and your snow re removal quote form there. And and that would be the most effective way for Google to say, okay, this page is about snow removal and that's in the search results. We're going to serve that up for people looking for the term snow removal services, snow plowing. Uh, you get the point. But if it has snow removal, landscaping, lawn care all on the same site google says okay it, it, yeah it has snow removal on there but it's got these other things and it's probably going to waste you know the visitor's time and they're they're not going to spend as much time on it necessarily so we're not going to rank it as high that's again that's my personal experience try and focus if you have different services within your business dedicate a page to each that's my my personal tip um when you're when you're making your website so Anyways, moving on, uh, I've shown you what you can do with these keywords. Again, these keywords also come into play when you're doing any pay-per-click advertising. 
Uh, very important that you have those keywords within your content if you're trying to market your business in these ads up here, okay? So uh, family law firm, family law, family law. Those are right in the title, the term family law. And uh, this, this ad here, I'm just going to guess. Um, I'm just trying to see if the, the term family law is in it. I'm, I'm going to guess that this particular ad, they're paying a lot more just because they don't actually have the term family law in it when we did the search for family law. So these three ads do, and and that's important. I'll, I'll show you and I'll cover that in module three, uh, why you want to include those keywords in your content and also in your ads. So moving on, I'll show you another tool, uh, Uber Suggest, okay? Ubersuggest.io. Ubersuggest.io. Uh, just a quick, you know, tidbit here. .io. I, I said, what, what's IO? You, you know, you, we usually have .com, .ca. That's uh, Indian Ocean. Anyways, just for uh, those that want to know. So Uber Suggest is a is a keyword idea generating tool. So let's type in the term lawn care. And then we just simply, you can select, you know, on the web or what is this for? We'll leave it on the web. Yeah, English, select your language, click on suggest. And it's going to come up with a bunch of keyword ideas for us. Okay. So lawn care, lawn care service, lawn care tips, lawn care near me, lawn care companies. Okay. Lawn care business. These uh, are not necessarily... Uh, keywords that you would find on the Google Keyword Planner tool. And it just gives you some more ideas uh, when generating keywords. Okay, my final tool that I want to uh, explain to you, a process that I often use that's often very effective, is the good old fashioned noggin. Right, so uh, try and use, you know, put on your marketing cap and think, put yourself in your customer's shoes. You know your business best and try to imagine what kind of key terms would your customers be typing into the search bar in order to search for your business, your services, your product. Um, so let's, you know, you grab a, a pen, you grab a piece of paper and you, you just start coming up with those, a list of those key terms. Now, keep in mind, every excellent marketer will be using those tools that I just showed you. And they'll have access to those same words and phrases, keywords that you are also competing for. So I, I, like to be, I like to try and be unique, try to be different, separate yourself and come up with unique phrases. Sometimes they flop, sometimes they're that golden nugget that sets you apart. So let's, uh, you know, okay, let's, let's pretend, I'm gonna pretend I own a landscaping company and I'm just gonna put on my marketing hat, close my eyes, and just start thinking of what I would type in if I was looking for uh, some kind of uh, services by a landscaping company. So, it goes. Um, lawn care, lawn care rates, uh, landscaping company, now, now keep in mind when you're typing these in in your own city, the results that come up. Luckily, uh, search engines are smart enough to decipher. Okay, this person's looking for a service, something that's offered locally. So you're not going to get results for if you're living in New York. You're not going to get results for a Boston landscaping company on the first page. You're going to get local results around wherever you are. So, okay, let's continue on. Uh, lawn care quotes. Somebody looking for, you know, they're deep in the sales funnel. They're looking uh, for, they've got their credit card out. They're looking for services right away. Just start making a list. Write those down and try implementing those and putting some of those into the keyword planner tool. See if they come up, see what kind of volume they have. And uh, maybe you want to implement those, put those on your website, give them a try. Okay, so that almost concludes the second module on keywords. Uh, if you're looking for some bonus material, would like to uh, 
see some of the resources that I use, you're more than welcome. I have them listed on my website at tomtattle.com slash traffic. So type in your URL bar, tomtattle.com slash traffic, and you'll see the all four modules will be listed there. You'll have an opportunity to uh, go through each, and you'll see at the bottom I, I will list some uh, resources that I would use for keyword research. Some of the experts in the industry, some of the people that I look up to and follow, and you can check their stuff out too. One thing I will mention, uh, shameless plug here, if keyword research is not something you're interested in, I get it, you're busy, you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, and you say, hey Tom, I, you know, this is great stuff, but I've got no time for this, and you would like me to hire me for uh, right now, currently I have a $99 package. If you go to tomtattle.com and look under services, I will uh, personally, uh, there's a, a form for you to fill out. I'll get to know about your business and your customers and your geographical location. I will do some research and give you the top 10 words that you should be targeting. And uh, anyways, you can check that out. As always, I encourage you to like and subscribe if you found this content in the least bit helpful or valuable. Uh, it, it really helps me with my audience to help grow my audience, get the word out there. And I appreciate it if you take the, the time to uh, hit that thumbs up button below this video, or uh, more importantly, subscribe and you can get more great content. Lots of, I, I constantly produce lots of great free information like in this video to help you grow your business. So please subscribe. Okay, I also encourage comments in the comment section below. If you should have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. And just to get the ball rolling, I'm gonna ask you a question, and if you wouldn't mind leaving a response below. My question is to you, did you take keywords into consideration when you designed your website or had your website designed? Okay, that concludes module two. I hope you enjoyed it. And I encourage you to move on to module three, where we will learn all about pay-per-click advertising to me, the most effective tool in, tra in attracting targeted traffic to your small business website. Bar none, this is the best tool right now in 2016 and beyond. This is basically where you wanna be playing and have a good grasp of how it works.